Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins, along with Dr. Stephen Greer, founder of The Disclosure Project and his new mission, dropping a massive amount of data. Let me tell you, the DPIA, The Disclosure Project Intelligence Archive is massive and it's gonna be on a website, 33 years of work and you're about to see it, the world's gonna see it and they're gonna be rocked. Dr. Greer, thanks for joining us. Thanks, it's good to see you and uh... Yeah, so the Disclosure Project Intelligence Archive. Uh, yeah, let me give you a little background, everyone, on this. Uh, about three years ago, I was asked by the senior investigators for the Senate Intelligence Com Committee to help them get to the bottom of this. And at that time, um, the idea is that they were going to be able to get funding in place to do a, a very large investigation on this, uh, where I would have worked embedded with that contractor to get all the terabytes of data and information I have into the hands of the intelligence community, but they never were able to move that forward for funding. So what I started doing about a little over two years ago, well, two and a half, was to begin to digitize everything we have and everything that's in other archives uh, in a massive project. So it's been um, 34 years in the making. You'll see things from 1990 all the way to very current. And they're organized in, uh, uh, there'll be 14 categories. So that site is live right now. Um, so it's dpiarchive.com. And um, it has, uh, I believe 112 uh, top secret military, corporate intelligence, whistleblowers testimony in it, unmasked with their names. It has another uh, 600 and 50 mass names that can be subpoenaed or investigated um, should the Congress pivot to that. But what you'll see for that list is the master witness list uh, is a little synopsis of what they know or what they're gonna testify to. But their names are redacted because these are people who don't wanna be known by the public yet. And this list is gonna keep growing. So to give you an idea of how extensive this is, there's also all the correspondence between me and all these hundreds of whistleblowers, but their emails and names are blacked out if they're someone who's still confidential. But if it's someone disclosed, you'll see who they are. And that began in the early 1990s, around the time I briefed the director of the CIA uh, for Bill Clinton. So this is a massive dump of intelligence and information. It also has uh, 151, I believe it is, uh, black sites, locations where operations have occurred, um, a map, as well as a list and description. Uh, it has uh, thousands of pages of uh, government documents from the US, UK, Australia, uh, KGB, former Soviet Union, et cetera. Um, I will tell everyone, let me just say a headline right here. I was just up on Capitol Hill last week meeting with members of the House Oversight Committee and members of Congress. And quite frankly, I told them, if they had hearings that started at 9 a.m. and went till 5 p.m. every day they're in session for the next year, it would be less than 10 percent of what's in this archive. So when people say, when is disclosure going to happen? My friends, this is it. Now they can have an official disclosure if they ever get their cells organized. We're going to talk about this in a minute, what the status of disclosure is with the U.S. government. But I will tell you the reason I did this is because even though the Senate intelligence guys couldn't get it organized, we've spent about $500,000 on staff and travel and programming. The website alone costs something upwards of $100,000 to create. Uh, we're making it free to everyone. Now, we have a crowdfunding program. The crowdfunding program, uh, there's a link here uh, on the site. You can go to it. We're hoping people will support it because the cloud usage charges for that many terabytes with thousands, millions of people using it will run into the thousands of dollars and perhaps tens of thousands of dollars a month. For that reason, we haven't put a paywall up and we don't want to, but if that's wholly dependent on you guys and the public supporting it. If you don't support it, we'll have to because we don't have anyone to underwrite these massive costs. Um, the other thing is that we're gonna be hiring a full-time archivist as well as we have ongoing uh, programming both for the uh, archive itself, the back end of it, but also for the website. So this has just been launched in the last few days. 
and it's being beta tested, but it's available to everyone right now, immediately. And the reason we did that, even though it's still under construction, is that the information is so critical and it's so timely. And also we have learned some things that are happening outside the Congress that are moving faster than the US Congress is able to move. And so we wanted to get out ahead of that curve by providing all of this to the public. But it's also a research tool that we're giving and sending to the members of uh, the Senate and the House and the National Security Council people, the White House military office folks I've been working with, so that they can do a deep dive on their own. It's a searchable website. Um, there may be a glitch here and there, but we've, we've been working on it now for a very long time. And um, I think you'll be quite amazed, but it's a lot of material to go through. What we have done is put it into all these categories and subcategories. So like if you want to look into the crash retrievals, we have 122 documented crash retrievals, many of them illustrated. Um, people working with Michael Schratt uh, did, but other cases we have. And then uh, we have those organized by priority. And the ones that are most important are the ones that have named sources as opposed to anonymous sources. So you will see that uh, that's a huge section of the website as well. Um, so all the, there's a whole category on technologies, anti-gravity propulsion, the history of it, uh, electromagnetic warfare systems. So pretty much everything that anyone would ever wanna know or need to know, whether you're the president or the man on the street is in this archive. It's not an overstatement. And so uh, it, it's, you know, it, they've been sitting in our <laughs> basement and in boxes and file cabinets for 30 years, but now it's out. Uh, it's a lot of work and we're going to be adding to it. The other thing I want to let everyone know, if you've got something legitimate and important that the whole world should see, or for that matter, members of the Congress and the White House should see, um, please send them to us. There's a way to contact us on the website for the archive. And if we will review it, I'm going to guarantee we'll put it in if we don't feel it's credible. But if it's credible, then we will put it in. The other thing is crowdsourcing the uh, site itself, not only bringing in material, but if you find that something is miscategorized or not labeled properly, let us know. Because, I mean, we've been doing this with a couple of staff people and mostly volunteers and uh, the uh, Senate intelligence folks anticipated there would be 30 full-time people working on this archive. When they dropped the ball, we picked it up. You know, that's how I am. And I just say, okay, you know, you're dealing with government people and, you know, you're lucky if they can get, get themselves organized out of a paper bag. But um, <laughs> frankly, but it, that's why it's incumbent on the, uh, we the people to do it. So that's what we've done. Yeah, it's basically like what you're putting together is the Bible of disclosure. And, you know, 33 yep. years of the data the videos it's pretty immense and obviously it's a work in progress but you know i can't wait till the world gets to wrap their minds around all of this like you said it'd take congress basically a whole year to go over this if they were doing 12-hour shifts over there you know well you would actually even the public would take probably one to two years to go through the eleven thousand five hundred discrete files and some of the files have hundreds of pages or hundreds of documents in them but you know, you can search it. So if you want to look up Bentwaters or if you want to look up uh, the Cash Landrum uh, case where, you know, those people were injured by the malfunctioning ET craft that had a man-made propulsion system on it. Or if you want to look up a specific whistleblower and witness, uh, it's searchable. So uh, that was also a big technical challenge to create a database that big that would be searchable to the public as opposed to a private library or something. So we had to custom make the website and custom design the database. Wow, that, that's quite incredible to make it user friendly. So if you're interested in a certain subject matter, because this yep. field is so broad, the stories yep. are so plentiful that you want to narrow it down to a specific situation, you could easily do that at the site. I, I think that's important. You talk about these top secret files. That, to me, that is... Mm -hmm. Interesting, because aren't you afraid of any kind of a uh, blowback releasing top secret files? I know you talk about, well, these are mm -hmm. illegally, uh, these programs are illegal. Therefore, mm -hmm. does it come under uh, the constitution of being top secret? You still ready? Hey, to I've been doing that out? for a long time. I mean, if you don't own the case behind me, I'm in Washington right now at our place up the street from the White House. And 
you know, I have two uh, black books there that are prior presidential briefing documents that have uh, classified documents, top secret, that have never been declassified that I have put out and they're in this archive. And how can we do that? Is because the projects that are underlie them are illegal and unconstitutional. And when I first started doing that way back, and you know, you, you know, everyone laughs about this particular case because it's very iconic. Is that when I had a national security agency operative lift out of the quote unquote vault the top secret transcript of uh, uh, James Jesus Jesus Angleton. Uh, summarizing what Marilyn Monroe was threatening to do to hold a press conference to tell the world about all this after she had had her uh, affair with, with President Kennedy. And then she was killed two days later. That document has been studied. It's authentic. It's still top secret. And there are others like that in there now. So anyone who wants to look at it can see it. Uh, it's in a PDF. You can read it. Um, it's free and open to the public. This is an extraordinary. I will be very blunt. If you take the time and the money, the travel, everything that's gone into making this archive, uh, the millions of miles flying and interviewing people and acquiring all this material, it's at least $20 million in content we're giving for free. So that's why we're asking people to, to support the crowdfunding uh, so that the archive doesn't have to be shut down and, and have a paywall put up where you'd have to pay a monthly fee or something. Right now, it's an experiment. I'll tell you that. No one's ever released something this big and, and without a big foundation underwriting the cost. The costs are six digit easily. So we have a one million dollar goal. And so we hope some high net worth people as well as the average user will make a contribution. You know, putting it out for free. And this is how people around the world get to like absorb it as fast as possible. And again, 33 yep. years, like you say, it basically costs about $20 million to put all this together. So uh, right. oh, again, oh, it's the biggest project. And I'm being very, very conservative on that. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, it's really more than that, but, but that's why the other thing, remember you can go in there. You do have to register and provide an email. I don't care what you provide. The reason we're doing that, I had one person say, well, then people have to register. I say, yeah, you do. Because otherwise, the covert groups that want to bankrupt us could create a million bots out of bot server farms from North Korea and elsewhere and flood the site and run up the usage charges from the cloud uh, so that you know it would reach hundreds of thousands of dollars a month and we'd have to shut it down. So the reason we have that registration system isn't anything spooky is to keep it from being invaded by bots um, and and then, you know, a absolutely running up the cost to the point that we have to shut it down to the public altogether. So uh, some people have complained about that. My reply is if you're too lazy and frankly uh, selfish to, to put a registration in like you would do for any airline frequent flyer miles program or anything else or Amazon or anything else, then you don't need to get in there. Uh, because yeah. we have to protect yeah. the archive. We have to protect the archive from a, a sort of a denial of service attack, as well as um, a whole bunch of uh, artificial fake users getting in there, looking at hundreds of videos continuously running up usage charges that would literally bankrupt the disclosure effort. So that's why there is a registration effort. And I hope people understand that. You know, it was real simple. I signed up, I clicked oh, yeah. the link it's and put simple. in the email, and uh, there yeah. you go. It's, it, yeah. it's uh, again, a work in progress, and there's so much that's going to be coming out that, you know, how hard is it just to put your email, contact, and then do it? It <laughs> took me less than 30 oh, well, seconds. So, Look, yeah. I mean, you know, people could people vet you about everything, but, uh, and, you know, there's this, you know, the end, end, endless uh, thing with this subject or the countless trolls out there, but um, really what we want to do is we want to protect the archive from being attacked and shut down. And that's why we have that uh, verification pro system when you register. Uh, and it, it works. And, uh, you know, that actually costs tens of thousands of dollars just to put that system in. So, you know, yeah, yeah, we had to. I mean, we were advised if we didn't, uh, the site would be absolutely overwhelmed. Uh, with fake users and, and you know when you we're, we're paying the bill to the amazon cloud to host this thing right and so when you're talking about terabytes of data and all those videos and other material and photos being used by millions of people 
Um, you know, if you had a, uh, a, a just one bot server farm creating artificial accounts and jumping in there, uh, you know, it could absolutely cause us to have to shut the whole project down. So that's why we're trying to protect it. Yeah, you want to protect something that uh, valuable, the information. Again, you're going big, right. either go big, go home. And it sounds like you're doing one of the biggest things the Internet's ever seen. So uh, it is. thank you for that. It's quite uh there's, it's a big feat and uh, you're really doing it. I think, like you say, disclosures in these documents, these videos and right. uh, the eyewitnesses, these, these are firsthand eyewitnesses. Can you tell me, yep. like, obviously people are looking for shock value or to be mind blown. What blows your mind where you think people uh, might take away the, the, one of some of the most sensitive information that the world hasn't seen yet? But I think some of the most important information is in the section that's redacted, but we still have the accounts. And it also, many of them are illustrated uh, by artists uh, that we've engaged to create an illustration, such as very recent retrievals, um, uh, places that we've been able to document that are underground bases. I mean, when you go through that and then you see the supporting documents in that section, uh, it's, it's astonishing. And I will tell you, when I when meet with members of Congress, uh, none of them know those assets are there or those facilities are there or that, you know, where are we building and, and testing, for example, the man-made UAPs or UFOs? Well, all of that's in there, up to and including photographs and details of, of where they come out from underground and how they're tested. So this is a massive amount of information. Now, a lot of people say, well, it's kind of a needle in the haystack until you prioritize them. And that's true. So what we've started to do is to go through and put the top priority ones in each category and subcategory. But that's gonna be another year to refine that at least. Uh, and what we're also gonna do um, in March, we did a whole week and many of you may have been part of it because we webinared it uh, where I did section by section, a description and an overview that connected all the dots because, and that is still being uh, written and those are not in there yet. That'll be the first category that's not now showing. And those are the intelligence assessments for each category uh, in, in the archive. Um, it's been done in terms of me presenting the information, but it was a, a, a oral presentation that's being rewritten to be read instead of listened to, because it can be read much more quickly, as you know, than, than watching a video. Um, but that is going to be uh, in there, we hope, in the next couple of months. Uh, and the reason that's important is that you may have all this data and all these cases, but how do you make any sense of it? Like, for example, how has the black budget funding been uh, created? Where does it go? How, what organizations, departments of the government, corporations are part of that? A lot of this, where there may be a huge amounts that we have in the black budget section of the website, but connecting all those dots. And basically, that's what I do when I do a briefing for people on Capitol Hill or, or in Washington, uh, is that that's what I do. But see, that's never been put down. I've done it in meetings, but we did a whole week at our retreat center in Hot Springs, Virginia, about a month ago. And we went through for, you know, it's like 35 hours where I presented all these uh, assessments and overviews. And so that's, that's going to be added uh, in the coming months as well. Well, it's just the, the content will expound throughout the years and it's just not a, a one-time drop. You're going to keep it updated right. with the new information, even coming in from the public. This video alone will yep. probably get people coming forward, being inspired that there is finally a place that we could share the information, share it with the world at the same time like that. You know, again, well, and, yeah, we did. And that, you know, there are some other organizations that have some of their archive, but it's, it's behind a multi hundred dollar per year paywall or something. And, and it just limits access to the public. Something like this is like Wikipedia, uh, you know, where you can get in and look for anything, except you have to register. But um, it's all has also has to be supported through donations. Otherwise, it is not going to work. Yeah. And we're going to be supplying the original link where you guys could go mm -hmm. and take a look at the site, donate, and, yep. you know, all the, any 
amount will help. It's a massive project. Again, millions and millions of dollars have been put into this and it's going to be given out for free and it's all uh, based on some donations. And uh, again, the link is below. Make sure you take a look at that. And I know you're going to be sharing some of this stuff and I know Congress yeah. is going to be watching it. Uh, the black budget programs are going to be looking at this very closely. I'm sure oh, yeah. oh, referenced yeah. as well. Oh, what they're already this? in there. Where they're yeah. already in there looking. You're calling out <laughs> well, the names. Here, here's the names. something everyone can do. Everyone's, you know, I mean, we talk lip service about democracy, right? But everyone listening, if you're in the United States or in some other country with your par parliament, send your member of Congress and your senators and the president a link to this archive and say, you're asking for this information. There's open investigations and ongoing inquiries by the Senate Armed Services, Senate Intelligence and House Oversight Committee for starters. And everything they're asking for is in there. So that's why the public needs to start contacting their members of Congress and senators and, and the president and say, uh, look, this is uh, real. This is, don't take Dr. Greer. I've always said for years, I don't care if anyone believes me or not, but here are 112 named whistleblowers, right? Not secondhand people like they did last summer where somebody who learned something talked about it, but it's actually the direct people. So I think this is what we need to ask our representatives to take this seriously and assign a staffer to go through this and pull the stuff that the senator or the member of Congress really needs to see, right? Because no, no member of Congress has enough time to sift through all this, but they should have a staffer assigned to go through and pull out the things that they're asking for. Um, and that's that's triaging. I'm an emergency doctor, so I use this term triage, you know, ordering all the content. We've started at that, but there's a lot still to be done. But in the meanwhile, uh, every time I meet with a, a, a member of Congress or a senator, they'll say, well, I want to see X. And some of them want to see a photograph or some of them want to know where are these un, uh, secret bases? Some of them want to hear from direct firsthand witnesses. Some of them want to say, well, are there any legitimate government documents? So, and they don't have them. Now there's a one-stop shopping here on this archive, the Disclosure Project Intelligence Archive, where they can have that. And I think that tool is a tool that will, I hope, further propel disclosure forward but we need to put it in front of our representatives by writing to them and sending them the link. Absolutely. We've been talking to Congressman Tim Burchett. You've been talking with them. Mm -hmm. Again, why the foot dragging in D.C.? Why are they not <laughs> speaking with these firsthand uh, whistleblowers? It just doesn't make sense. They'll bring in people that have. Uh, OK, second, well, let me person. let me give let me give everyone breaking. This is breaking news because this happened a week ago. Um, last week, I was up on Capitol Hill meeting with some members of Congress and staffers. And what here's what happened. Last year, as you know, uh, the week that we did the uh, Disclosure Project press conference, you were there in Washington. The Senate Intelligence Committee passed unanimously the uh, amnesty or safe harbor provision so that high value whistleblowers could come forward and not be prosecuted for a six month period. They also had other provisions in there. Those were all taken out by the House when it went to reconciliation. So to pass a bill, here's your civics lesson. To get a bill out of Congress, it has to be the Senate and the House agree. And to get the Defense Authorization Act through in December, um, they, they actually took out the teeth of that bill, right? Now, when that happened, you know, I have some very highly placed people in these covert programs who were furious and they started talking about the uh, corruption and incompetence of Congress. And I said, look, it's a process. Um, we're going to make another run at that. But in the meanwhile, there's some more bad news. And I hate to, I'll give you all the bad news first. Um, the other bad news is that even after that happened, people on the House Oversight Committee, multiple, not just for Chip, but other people I'm working with, uh, felt they were going to get subpoena power and a select committee that would be funded with staff to really get to the bottom of this. Uh, as of last week, uh, that looks like that's not going to happen. Uh, and I'm going to disclose something that's going to be a bit controversial, um, but I'm going to put it out there because the people have a right to know. There are two members of Congress who are powerful chairs of two committees in the House of Representatives that have killed 
and have been uh, sort of pushing aside this momentum. One of them is Mike Turner of the uh, House, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. The other is Mike Rogers of the House Armed Services Committee. Um, I will point out that uh, Mr. Turner's district has Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in it, and they also receive huge contributions from Lockheed Martin and uh, other aerospace companies. Now, this I did speak with uh, the members of the House about this, and they're very disappointed because it looks like the momentum that was going forward to get subpoena power on a select committee that's funded has been turned aside. And when I think this is something that needs to be investigated, to what extent there may be members of Congress who are in collusion with an illegal and unsanctioned program and cover up. And if that's the case, and I suspect it is, uh, if the uh, Department of Justice or FBI were to drill down on it, I think they would find that to be true. Now, you know, three years ago, I when we first started on this process uh, at, at the Senate level with intelligence and, and armed services in the Senate, um, I, they, they asked me about this. I said, yes, there are always people embedded in the system that stop forward momentum on disclosure. And we're going to know who they are by what they do. So between December and now, which has only been four or five months, now we know at least these two folks who have been not supporting it and taking active actions to stop it, um, the forward momentum. So I think the public needs to know that if you are in these gentlemen's home district, you need to express your displeasure. And uh, I'm calling this out. It's unusual for me to do this, but it's, um, you know, I can tell you that the people I'm working with who are inside those very covert programs who want to come forward. I mean, they're actively in there. I mean, very high up. They're very upset about this. So, um, it's time for the, I mean, I, the stuff we do is, is, you know, serious as a heart attack. And, you know, it's time for this chicanery to come to a stop. And the people who are in collusion with the cover-up need to be called out. And uh, so that is something I'm sharing here for the first time. Well, I'm sure Mike Turner and uh, Mike Rogers, after we put this out, uh, they're going to be uh, having some emails and phones. Ringing yeah, well, as, they uh, should. They're trying to suppress... They you know, that's where Wright Patterson is the holy grail of some of this stuff. And if they're well, and a lot of people think that was just an old place from the 40s and 50s. Uh, -uh. It's still a very active site. I have people who are there and have been there recently. Um, interestingly, there's a medical doctor on my team who uh, knows Mr. Turner, and uh, he lives there in Dayton, Ohio. And uh, I have some deep intel on all that that I'm not going to talk about right now. But now, the good news, everybody want to hear some good news. There's some good news. So uh, sure. yesterday, um, I was talking to a very senior um, uh, official uh, in the government who uh, I've been working with for a little over a year now and putting together a law enforcement effort. And uh, you've heard me speak about this. And one thing I asked for from the Senate and the House was, serious 24 seven security and protection for certain high value uh, whistleblowers. I'm not talking about something like Mr. Fravor, you know, saw one of these objects, but people who worked in the skunk, skunk works, people have worked for major corporations, people who've managed programs uh, that are illegal for DOD that are uh, unacknowledged special access projects that have been run illegally and off budget those people really are scared for their lives and their families' lives. Um, now, Congress, even the bill that came out of the Senate, did not have those provisions. Here's some good news. I can't say what agencies are involved, but that protection is now in place and effective after June 20th. So that's what it really takes is protecting the, these individuals that are so deep in these black budget programs mm -hmm. that they can't just come out and whistleblow without any kind of protection. It's like a criminal, uh, somebody testifying against a criminal, somebody that's very, very dangerous. It, they put these people- Exactly, in yeah. Um, um, imagine if you had, imagine if you were trying to get the cooperation of a whistleblower or informant on the mafia and that mafia- Don and the organization would kill you and your whole family. 
right? That's what we're dealing with. It's not a conspiracy theory. So let me just get, so make this real for people because everything gets too abstract. Um, I'm actively, as of for the past year and, and as of last week, been going back and forth with a man who used to be the chairman of a Fortune 50 company that dealt with this issue. Big corporation. Chairman. Not a worker bee. He has documents. He has propulsion system drawings. He has energy system drawings. Now, he's up there in years pushing 80, and he wants to come forward. But after he reached out to me, he had a man that he had worked with for years who was clandestine say, look, they will kill not just you, but your, all your children and grandchildren. Now, this has happened to us multiple times. Now, the members of Congress are really slow at realizing that this is true. I think uh, Mr. Burchett and uh, Moskowitz and perhaps Luna do. Um, others think it can't be possible um, that things would be that out of control, but they are. Luckily, the people who have been special operators, special forces, people in very key places who, that I've been meeting with now understand that absolutely is the case. And so as of June 20th this year, which is in a little over a month, we will have in place the ability to put this kind of OPSEX, operational security, around high value whistleblowers. Um, and that is a, a big game changer that did not exist for the last 80 years. So one of the thing, reasons I'm disclosing that right now is that if there are people sitting out there, and there are, waiting to see if that would be put in place, it is. It, it is organized. Uh, it will be fully operational by June 20th. And I cannot say what agencies and entities are, are standing this up, but it's very powerful and it's a SAP. It's a special access project. So um, now I, I, I know all those involved with it can vouch for their integrity and their sincerity. So if you are a whistleblower who has information, documents, worked in a situation over some period of time where you feel that you need that kind of security, uh, please contact me and we will make that happen for you. But it, it won't be until uh, after June 20th. Well, I think uh, I think this is important and it needs to be, um, in, you know, it needs to be stated that the fact is that some of the testimony that these potential eyewitnesses that come forward uh, could shock the world and actually change the world overnight. So uh, mm -hmm. it's it's very important. And these people do need protection. They're, right. they're, they're putting the, their lives on the line. They're whistleblowing at the mm -hmm. highest level. So uh, again, they right. do need protection. We urge uh, Congress to pass uh, these laws. And by June 20th, it sounds like uh, there might be a window of, of opportunity for some. No, not might be. I'm telling you, it will be. Happen. All right. Because I'm directly involved. In fact, I'm the senior advisor for intelligence and information and strategy for that group. So I'm, I'll just put that out there. So that's how this works. So now, now remember, a lot of people who come forward with the disclosure project, they came across something incidentally, right? Like, like the pilot, uh, Mr. Fravor, who is a Hornet pilot with that event off the coast of San Diego. He wasn't read into operations at a black site dealing with UAPs. He wasn't in an underground base with the uh, retrieved ET uh, materiel. He wasn't with a corporation building the energy and propulsion systems. So he doesn't have that kind of risk, frankly. But someone who it has been in those positions, and we have those people, they absolutely need it. And also they need um, to have electronic surveillance to protect them. Let me give you a good example. Uh, we were going to have a man who had been uh, at the Northern Nevada test range uh, back uh, maybe a decade or 15 years ago uh, on a retrieval operation. That was his assignment at a site. We know where it is. It's on our map. Uh, if you go into the archive, you'll see where this site is. And when he began to move forward to come here to Washington, because I was going to bring him to uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee folks and then to, over to Arrow, uh, he had a, a black SUV pull up at his house up in the upper Midwest, and some goons came out. If you take one more step towards disclosing what you worked on and where it was, you will be in prison for the rest of your natural life, and you will never see your two young children again. 
that actually happens to my people. So this is not a conspiracy theory for all the jackasses who think that this group is, is a, a bunch of you know, blowhards. This is the dirty tricks they do. Now, let's say I, that same thing were to happen after June 20th, and I hand off this high value source. Anyone who would show up and do something like that, they're going to see who they are. And they're going to go grab them up and they will open a criminal file. Listen to me, folks. This is serious. They will open a criminal file on anyone who pulls a dirty stunt like that. See, this hasn't been in existence in the 80 years of this cover up. And now it is starting June 20th. So now if you were ever on the fence about what you should do uh, to do speak the truth and, and be on the right side of history, it's, it's time to reach out to us now and do it. It's time, time to step up, guys. If you're yeah, it there, is time to step up. Yeah. yeah. Even if you work for the these black budget programs, you made a living, you raised your family, but you realize that this is something that the world needs to see, and this is an illegal program you're uh, working for. You got well, and, and by the way, let me point out that this applies to people currently in those projects because this will be full spectrum penetration of uh, of these assets and anyone who would in person or electronically try to threaten them or induce them or what have you. And I think that this is something that obviously I've been asking for this since I first dealt with the CIA director and the officials in the Clinton administration. If you go into <laughs> the archive, you're going to see a whole list of things from 1993, four and five that are exactly the same requests. So for 30 years, we've been making these same requests. Uh, now, not the Congress, the Congress dropped the ball on that and the House blocked the amnesty period, uh, unfortunately, with the uh, uh, NDAA, the, the National Defense Authorization Act in December. But the uh, more law enforcement folks and uh, guys who have been in very senior intelligence and special forces positions, they know how serious this is and they're light years ahead of the Congress. And so uh, that's, I think, very good news. The other bit of good news I want to share before we leave is that there's also a cell, let's call it a group, that are currently highly operational in the, these covert programs dealing with UAPs that are organizing to come forward and do their own data dump. And of course, that would appear in our Disclosure Project archive. They will do it elsewhere also. I just met with them uh, about 10 days ago, uh, at least the main person and, and one of its security guys. And uh, that is, is moving separate from this other organization that's standing up security uh, and who are willing to open up criminal cases if, if, if they find that there's witness intimidation, threats, et cetera. Yeah, we don't need any intimidation, but if there is, there is, a, uh, sounds like you got the backup. These people yep. will be criminally uh, prosecuted for intimidating witnesses, just like they would under some kind of whistleblower sure. born sure. to a mafia boss or something like yep. this. So it, it, this is definitely a necessity uh, yep. for whistleblowers. They, they need to be protected and people prosecuted if they intimidate witnesses. This is, yeah, yep. uh, you, you know, remember important. last summer, even under oath, uh, Grush admitted, although he didn't want to elaborate on it, that he knew that there had been people who had been killed for trying to come forward. Remember that? And then they, he said, but I should talk about that in a SCIF, a secure compartment and information facility, which, by the way, is totally false. You, you don't need a SCIF to expose someone doing criminal activities. Um, but again, you know, he was new to this and, and young. But I, I will tell you that this, this will not be proceeding in a SCIF. Uh, and if somebody, uh, if they step into our environment, mine or these whistleblowers, they're going to find out that they're going to be in, in, in big trouble legally, criminally. No, this is a, it sounds like the battle for disclosure continues. That's absolutely, yeah, yeah, that's we're right. in the battle. It is. We're in the battle. It is. The battle for disclosure documentary is about to drop here very soon as well. We're looking forward to that. But let's get into, um, you got something important coming up in California, Temecula, right? Oh, yeah. Those of you who want to come, there's still some uh, in-person seats. It's a beautiful place uh, just to the east of Temecula, California. And we're going to have a Friday, Saturday, Sunday gathering. I think it will hold 500 people is all. 
um, but where you can be out and we're going to have all day long. Uh, we're going to have people who uh, are training other folks in remote viewing in the morning and setting up your CE5 contact teams. And then I'll be presenting all afternoon. And then every night we have this beautiful area set up where we're going to be doing close encounters of the fifth kind uh, protocols with this whole 500 person group. But if you can't be there in person, I think there are a hundred and some seats left. You can do it by webinars. You can be part of a whole nighttime event and all day um, by just getting the, the, a webinar link. And that's going to be uh, in the, the video right up here. There's a hot link for that. And that's the July um, 26th, 27th, 28th. Um, so it's in you know, two and a half months. But you know, if you want to come, and then we're going to do, uh, uh, for those who want to really support the Disclosure Project and Archive, we're doing a, um, a VIP uh, level of uh, contribution where we'll have a, a fun after party till midnight or one o'clock on Friday night uh, with folks. And then Saturday and Sunday, uh, we'll all be out under the stars, uh, you know, uh, doing the CE5 uh, contact protocols. And you can get the uh, CE5 contact app to practice before we do this event at the uh, your Google or uh, iPhone store, app store. Oh, yeah, so I hope to see a lot of you there. It'll be fun. And yeah. uh, I think we'll have some, maybe some fun surprise guests that will show up there. Yeah, we're there in uh, your CE5 over there in Arizona. Uh, there was a group mm -hmm. of 30 people, but you also did it uh, with 500 people. All that is, is just amazing, mm -hmm. all the collective energy. And there was a lot of action. Oh, yeah. Temecula. Well, you know, that, that's the power. You know, one yeah. of the fun things is a man surfaced out of um, a black site. He's currently works a black site out in Western deserts. And he works with what they call the P3 operators, the psionic operators that do their own version of consciousness interface. But for the purposes of seeing these craft uh, in advance and then knocking them down and killing them. So they're doing the opposite of what we're doing. We're doing it to reach out to them for peaceful contact. And that operation is to flat out kill them. And there's one black site I was at, by the way, in September, just before I was almost killed. But I don't, people don't know this story. In October, you know what happened to me. And um, But the uh, I was in a classified airspace in a chopper over these sites. And there were these gigantic electromagnetic pulse weapons that they use not only to test our own man-made anti-gravity UFOs, UAPs, but to target the ET ones and knock them down. He says, yeah, this one site, I did, went to two sites. The one site I was over, he says, we knocked down one or two ET craft per year. And unfortunately, if someone strays into that airspace, once they switch it on, on a, a temporary flight restriction, uh, they also knock down the private aircraft as well. And they, those people and the craft just disappear. Um, so, which is upsetting him a lot. I mean, he's operational now and he feels very bad about what they're doing. See, here's the other thing. A lot of these guys who are at the, the point where they're at the upper level, mid and upper level management, they started out as young men and they're 18, 20 years old as, you know, uh, special forces or whatever. And they got moved up and in and higher and higher. But a lot of them are very, very good people who want and they want to get out of that. And we need to create a pathway. That's why I'm from trying to get Congress to stop doing the foot dragging and, and move forward. But luckily, there is now this security protocol in place to protect them. And uh, but he, when he was talking about that, he said, someday, the thing that you get ridiculed for the most, which is CE5 contact, entanglement conscious field, remote viewing, all that, it's going to be proven that that is the key element of all this. And it is. So that's what you're going to be learning in Temecula, July 26, 27, 28. And uh, in fact, when I was, he was on my roof terrace here, you've been here, uh, up, up here in DC at this condo building. And we were talking about this and uh, he has a group of, of guys who are highly placed in the intelligence world that are started doing it. They had a massive pyramid triangular thing come over. He showed me on his iPhone. It was a CE5, but he was doing it for peaceful purposes. So he's th that those guys are turning from being they're in that system, but they're very much turning towards peace, contact, and peaceful disclosure. 
So there, it's very exciting on that level what's happening. The, yeah. the Congress is, 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 is slow. It's sort of a, you know, I kind of feel like they're going to really get their act together when these other elements come together and they don't have a choice, right? But, you know, this one guy who heads up a, a cell within the covert government programs, he said, basically, what we're going to do is going to, he calls it catastrophic disclosure. It would be dispositive. It'd be huge. And it would be all at once. And it's going to catch the president and the Congress flat footed. So the reason I'm giving you a little reason why I rushed to get this archive out. I know what's going on in that world. And so this is a way to prepare people with all this content for something much bigger that's coming. Catastrophic disclosure. I like the sound of that. And, uh, you know, well, I, I mean, we're trying to, <laughs> it's, it's going to be actually wanting to do this. <laughs> I'm wanting to do this in a way that doesn't totally just collapse things. Um, but, uh, I can tell you the word fed up has been used by me, uh, to, to me by these people who have yeah. been in these senior positions. Um, and, uh, I keep saying that when I have meetings with members of Congress, I go, you know, there's some other things going on. And they're getting fed up with this, this molasses in, in winter slow movement that's going on in the Congress. And I think that when, when, that, when the Senate bill got pushed aside and that amnesty or safe harbor clause got taken out in December, that was sort of the final straw for some of these guys. They went, all right, this is the, and the words they used was between the corruption and incompetence in Congress were fed up. So I, you know, these are guys, I'm, I sort of represent them when I go to these meetings and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, what Congress does, but the people are going to do this disclosure is what I think. The good people who are going to defect the whistleblowers and the average person who, you know, puts this archive and key parts of it in front of their members of Congress. Yep. Disclosure is in our hands and so are the people that have worked right. with these budgets for them to come forward and have a right. good conscience. It's, you know, yep. you've been working with these black budget programs for years, but it doesn't really matter. You have to come forward and uh, blow it open, blow it wide open because yeah. uh, what's going on behind the scenes, uh, yeah. you might not be working on the right side here is what we're all trying to say. I think, uh, I think this is pretty amazing what's going on. I'm going to be leaving the link in the description for the DPIA and the Temecula event as well in the mm -hmm. description. Everybody go take a look at that. Show your support. Uh, we need to get this information, this data out 33 years in the making terabytes of information and information that's even classified. It doesn't get much more to disclosure than what's uh, going to be dropping here in the DPIA right. and everything else. So it's going to be a wild right. 2024, Dr. Greer. Looking forward <laughs> to uh, meeting yep. up with you here soon again and uh, go on some uh, crazy adventures. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for helping us get the word out. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Dr. Greer, right. be safe. We'll All see right. You. Have a good night. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Appreciate it. That was Dr. Stephen Greer, everybody. If you enjoyed this interview, make sure you hit that thumbs up. And subscribe to Third Phase of Moon for more updates. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies. We're not alone. We'll see you next time. Here in Washington at 3 p.m., we're following a developing story. Could the military patrol the Well, you don't just have two, three, ten trillion dollars vanish. We've given so far 171 million dollars. Most of the work being done on this are private corporations. We call this a hybrid entity that's neither strictly government nor strictly private. If these are extraterrestrials are real and they're getting here from another star system, they're not using 20th century or early 21st century technology. People at the CIA call it WSFM, Weird Science and Frickin' Man.